Hi guys, Brain the Square Lion back with another video. I'm recording on a new camera so things may be a little different for this. Today I'm going to be going through my recap of everything that happened at Survivor Series. Now all in all, I'd say that it was... For a night of action, it was a good pay-per-view. It was a really good pay-per-view. But as a whole, for storylines and everything, it kind of fell a bit flat for me. I don't know, some of the things may turn out to be great in the future. It's just a sort of wait and see thing. I'm not exactly sure how I feel. But yeah, let's just jump into the first match. And the first match that happened on the kickoff show was the 10v10 uh, Smackdown vs Raw tag teams. Now this match started off very clunky. It just felt like there was too much trying to happen at the once. But it wasn't like it was a bad match. Towards the end, when we got down to the final four teams, I felt like that's where everything really picked up. Uh, the final four teams were Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, the Usos, The Revival and The New Day. These these four teams really put on a great show towards the end. A lot of high paced action, a lot going on and yet it just actually felt great. Biggest drawback with this match in my opinion was the Lucha House Party outlasted the club. Yeah, that, that felt terrible for me. The club are so underutilised. They are really being buried, and I just don't understand why. They are fantastic. It's just a shame to see it happening. There's so many great superstars on the shows that when you see the best ones getting buried, it really, really disappoints you. But yeah, the Usos were the lone survivors in this match, and they did pull off the victory for SmackDown. Now we move on to the main show, and the first match that we saw was the women's match, 5v5. Again, when it comes to action, this match felt great. A lot of great moves on show, a lot of fast-paced stuff going on. Uh, the first person eliminated was Naomi by Tamina, and I was like, what the hell are you doing? How can you have Tamina just eliminate Naomi straight off the bat? Tamina's crap. But then we did see Tamina immediately eliminated afterwards by Carmella, which, yeah... I started cheering, I was like, go Carmella. I don't know why, I absolutely love this team in of Carmella with R-Truth. It, it, it's so weird, it should just be completely stupid, but for me it felt brilliant. You had that weird moment during the match where uh, Nia Jax caused Sasha Banks to be eliminated, which I didn't understand, but I guess it's just a case of Nia going, I am the best, look at me. I can destroy anyone, I don't need a team. Nia Jax walked away as the sole survivor in this. I really do not agree with it at all. Not even in the slightest do I agree with this. A really good thing in this match though was it actually really bigged up uh, Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. They both looked absolutely incredible throughout this. So hopefully it pushes a lot more between them two because both superstars I would like to see a lot more of. I would like to see a big push for both of them, especially Sonya Deville, who in my opinion is incredible and will be champion one day. So the next match that we saw was Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, again, a lot of high-paced action in this, but it felt for me there could have been a lot more in this match. One of the things that was surprising to me is there was no involvement from Dean. I just felt like if they're really pushing this Dean heel narrative, I feel like they need to keep him on top of Seth. Like, just keep every opportunity. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. But yeah, as for the action, the action was fantastic. Yeah, we did see Seth Rollins walking away with a victory here, which it's a good thing. It's always a good thing. It's Seth Rollins. He is one of the best wrestlers in the world. I just feel like there could have been a smidge more in this. Just at least that little tiny bit. Now, next thing that we got to see was AOP versus The Bar. Again, we, we have the point that the action in the match was great. The action in the match just felt brilliant. But it was all of the stuff that was happening around it that just felt stupid. Especially the part where they had Drake Maverick pissing himself uh, at the thought of the big show attacking him. I mean, come on, are, are we children? Uh, oh, he peed himself, ha ha ha, let's laugh at him. It just felt kind of childish and stupid. We did see AOP walking away with a victory, which I think was 
the right way to go with it. AOP should be the ones walking away with a victory. They're brand new champions. Like, this is their first time holding the championships. I just feel like, get them dominant as much as you can. Next match that we had was Mustafa Ali versus Buddy Murphy for the Cruiserweight Championship. It's the first one that I'm going to say that we really could have got more action out of. Don't get me wrong, there was a lot of great moments in this match and the action between them was brilliant. But from what we've seen from the 205 guys as of late, I don't know, I just felt like from those matches they've kind of promised us something. They've kind of promised us all this fast-paced, high-octane action, moments where you're just going to go, oh my god. And yeah, this match really didn't deliver that, unfortunately for me. Maybe that's just me being greedy, wanting constant great matches from them. Let, let me know if I'm just being greedy here and just wanting more and more. We got the outcome that we thought we'd get. Buddy Murphy did walk away with a victory here, which it was the right way to go, come on. Mustafa Ali did look fantastic, and I've said it before, but I will say it again, he will hold the championship in the future. Uh, I just feel like right now wasn't the right time for him. I just feel like Buddy Murphy really needs to push forward as the champion and solidify himself as 205 Live's top superstar. So now we move on to the men's 5 versus 5 match. If I've got to give a full on opinion, this match was very, very disappointing. It's like the action in it was great. Yeah, Braun Strowman looked so powerful. But number one, you had Samoa Joe eliminated really early on in the match. I mean, I guess it, that does kind of push for... Actually, no, it doesn't push for anything. Because Samoa Joe was the one big man that was on Team SmackDown. Whereas on Team Raw, you had three. You had Drew McIntyre, you had Braun Strowman, and you had Bobby fucking Lashley. Uh, you could have had, if you wanted a big man eliminated early on, eliminate Bobby Lashley. Eliminate that bald-headed fuck. Honestly, it just felt stupid that you had one of your most destructive people. One person who you want to shine a fucking light on in SmackDown. And you just had him eliminated straight away in the match. I'm probably getting more angry than I should right now. I feel like I'm getting really pissed off. But Samoa Joe was eliminated first early on in the match. What kind of fucking bullshit is that? From there, it there's moments that get worse. There's moments that are okay. Like, my brother didn't agree with me, but I did think it was a good thing trying to take Braun out of the equation. Because, in my opinion, Braun's their biggest threat. Having Drew trying to be a one-man band... That did feel really good, like, Drew was like, I can fucking do this, I don't need any of you, I can fucking do it. While Braun's standing there going, I can do it, I don't need you and all that. It, that little clash felt great. Uh, seeing the Raw superstars turning on one another, again, felt great. But if you're going to have your superstars turning on one another, they should not be the winners of the match. Everything felt like it was just imploding in there, and yet Raw still walked away with a victory. I didn't think I'd get any angrier talking about any of this. But the last man standing for Team Smackdown was Shane McMahon. Not only that, Shane McMahon eliminated Dolph Ziggler. Shane beat Dolph again. Shane, fuck off. Just just leave. Just fuck off. Honestly, you're ruining wrestling. You are destroying what wrestling is. You're an overhyped cunt. You think you are the best fucking wrestler in the world. You even made it so that you have a trophy that says you are the best wrestler in the world. When the truth is, you all you're doing is overshadowing the actual fucking talent that you have on the roster. Again, I am going mental on a tyrant that I probably shouldn't be fucking going on. But it's the truth. Shane is ruining wrestling. And it's fucking horrible to see. So the next match that we saw was Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. And for me, it was probably one of the best matches on the card, but unfortunately it did feel a bit clunky at times. Yeah, it just did feel a little all over the place at times, which kind of drew back from it a little. But 
the best part of this isn't even in the match itself. It's when we get down to what happened. Ronda Rousey won via disqualification after Charlotte snapped. This may get a mixed review. Like, honestly, people might be looking at it like, why the fuck did they do it? Why are they going ahead with it? While others look at it like, we've got a heel Charlotte again. Which, I'm on that side. I feel like we've got heel Charlotte. This is going to push forward for a great narrative. Uh, we might see Charlotte versus Becky again, but this time done the right way with Becky as the face and Charlotte as the heel. But yeah, for me, all of, this match does get a, like, great rating from me uh it pulls back a little because of the clunkiness and how all over the place parts of it were but yeah no i'm i'm really really happy with it now on to the final match on the card this was brock lesnar versus daniel bryan while watching this we, we kept seeing that strange little look from daniel which i thought it meant he had like a secret weapon that was gonna push him forward for the win but we didn't actually see anything like that instead what we saw was brock absolutely just destroying daniel bryan and at this point i was looking at the match just like right so this is another all look at brock brock's a big man brock destroy but then we saw the comeback from daniel bryan and daniel bryan pushing himself into the match and really, really taking it to Brock. He was absolutely destroying Brock at this point. Brock sold really well, which I did enjoy. We did see Brock walking away with the victory, but I'm not upset about it because we got a really good match out of it. I know a lot of people will probably be upset with the fact that uh, Daniel Bryan lost to Brock Lesnar. But there you go, there's everything that happened at Survivor Series. For the fourth, it's me and my brother Drew. So... What we're going to do is, we're going to push ahead with that forfeit, with the thumbtacks. It will be the forfeit for TLC. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did like it, give it a like. Uh, let me know what you think of the quality of this, like the sound and the video. Because it's a brand new camera and I need to know if I'm pushing forward with it or moving back to using my phone. So I want your guys' opinion on what I should do. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you can always stay up to date on my content. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one.